Improvisation in Baroque style can seem really difficult, but there is like a secret key that can open us the right way for improvising in Baroque style. In this video, I'm gonna show you a great way for improvising in Baroque style combining patterns. Welcome to this new video, I am Ricardus, Musicus Practicus, and here on the web I help you and other musicians to learn improvisation, counterpoint, harmony at the keyboard and early music theory and all is what about early music. If you like this kind of content, you can subscribe to this channel and activate the bell. In this way, you will never miss any video. So, let's go to the keyboard and let's combine some pattern we already know. The first pattern is the Romanesca. There is a video about Romanesca that you can watch if you don't know what is a Romanesca. The second pattern is the Primer. And there is a particular video about the printer that you can watch if you don't know what's the printer and how it works. And the last pattern is a sequence and there is a video on improvisation elements that is reserved only to my patrons, but we will talk about this sequence in this video. So let's choose a key. We are in G minor, so first of all let's play the rule of the octave. There is also a video about the rule of the octave of G minor in all the three positions. So sound and in the keys of G minor. So the first element is Romanesca. I use the stepwise Romanesca. So this is a stepwise Romanesca in minor. And at the end of the Romanesca I use the printer for making a cadence. So Romanesca plus printer in G minor. The meter uh, we choose for this exercise is three octave. So, so. This is a stretch. And we can, for example, play a melody. Can be our first uh, phrase. The Romanesca. The Romanesca and the Prima. Then we can put a sequence that uh, is the sequence of which I made a video on improvisation element that is the following. for staying in the same key or for making a modulation. At this time we play this sequence, we only call it sequence, and we stay in G minor. So it means that this is not a modulating sequence. Now let's rock up Romanesca plus Printer and the sequence. <laughs> At the end of the printer, because I can't start here this second, I'm too low. I'm in the I'm in the bass part of the keyboard. This is not really good. I can also really starting from here. Or I can stay in G 
minor and playing a conjunction between this B flat and this other one. So staying in the time. can play a modulation to D minor, for example using this chord, that is the 2, 4 sharp, 6, then 6, then 7, 6, with the sharp and 3, and uh, this is a printer, this is another printer, so we are at, the, uh, at this point, modulating trainer that takes us to D minor and then we play the Romanesca plus trainer in D minor so in the lower part of the keyboard I can jump up okay and starting from this point I can play the sequence so the previous sequence but this time a modulating sequence that takes us for example to F major so modulating sequence plus to F major. So I'm here at this point. For example. Okay, and now let's play the Romanesca in F major. So Romanesca plus trainer in F major and then the same sequence, the previous sequence modulating sequence from F major that takes us to G minor so to the original key so, um, plus cadence to G minor. Okay, Romanesca. We are in G minor. So, as you can see, I don't play this sequence every time in the, in the same way. So, I can play starting from here this this one. This passage requires a lot of time, a lot of passages, so it becomes boring. So I have two possibilities, or I play a shorter cadence, like... And now I am already in G minor, but if I want to play a bigger cadence, a bigger sequence, because for example I want to expand my improvisation, I have to change some patterns in the sequence that are not harmonic patterns, but they are embellishment, they are the figures, they are the position 
or the combination of the hand that goes up and goes down in this way, for example. <laughs> it is no longer boring because I changed something. This is the concept of variety that is really important in Baroque music. Okay, and finally we can play another time the Romanesca, so A, Romanesca plus Prindler in G minor and finishing with a Quiescenza of the first degree, that is like a pedal. I have not made a video about Piscenza yet. So the Piscenza is very simple. We are in G minor, so G major with a 7, 4, 6, then this is the 2, 4, 7 with a sharp chord, and then the resolution. So let's play the Romanesca plus the Prindler in G minor and the Piscenza. For example, okay, now we have this list of patterns and we can improvise different pieces based on this succession. So let's try to place this improvisation from the beginning to the end. And this was the final result. This is not so difficult if you practice step by step all single patterns. Then you will be able to combine and invent all patterns you want. For that, for giving you a path you can follow step by step for learning how to do this and many other things about improvisation, improvisation elements is what you need. Improvisation elements are short, fun and simple videos like tutorials where you can practice and learn one topic for video. For example, there is a video about a sequence, a specific sequence, there is a video about a specific cadence, there is a video about uh, a particular way of making diminutions and the combination of all these videos will make you a good improviser, a difficult. Because if you practice a single element in different key and different ways, you will be able to combine and making a beautiful and complete improvisation. For that, as I said to you, each video is focused on a specific exercise. So, in conclusion, if you want to learn improvisation with fun and with a step-by-step -step way, you can join Improvisation Element on my channel. All the links and the YouTube in the description of this video. Have a good day and see you over it!